Prince's Well Wishers, Arch Nemesis, uh, and everybody in between. This is 313 Hockey, and I am Jake Rivard. What's up? It's uh, Thomas Fournier. I'm Maddie. <laughs> and that's Maddie. Um, yep. <laughs> we're really excited to get started today. This is our debut episode, as I'm sure everybody listening knows. So I figure we'll start off by doing like a general introduction of ourselves and just an idea of what this is going to be like. So whoever wants to start can get going, and we can go from there. I feel like it's you, Jake. That's got to start. All right. Well, you got to start. This is kind of your brainchild. I mean, a brainchild, you know, architect yeah. of the ideas, whatever. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Jake Rivard. You might know me from the Philip Zadina takes that had me crucified last season. If you don't know me from there, I am a writer winging it in Motown. I've written for a handful of other publications, and I am often seen on Twitter going on long-winded rants. And I figured the best thing to do with all of that energy, all of that cynicism, bitterness, anger that just gnaws at your soul is to put it in the world's most toxic uh, formula, a podcast. So that's my story. I feel like that's a pretty good summation of what we're planning on doing here. Rotten um, and evil, yeah. Yeah. I'm Thomas Fournier. I, uh, I went to school with Jake. I live up here in the Upper Peninsula, and I'm mostly our editor for this podcast as well as idea bounce off kind of guy so is it my turn it, yeah oh, yeah shit. all right i don't i don't write for any publications except for twitter.com very frequently being enabled by jake that's how we met and uh just lots of ramblings about the red wings over there and some very unhinged takes so i'm hoping that's why I was asked to join this podcast. And also, besides the fact that I am the minority hire already previously discussed, <laughs> I'm glad I in some way or another. Yeah, yeah uh, we're glad to all, have you. All you listeners are in for a lot of trouble. Um, you have a gay, a Uber, and a Jew on one podcast. Oh, and also a woman. So, like, get ready. Totally unheard of in the sports world. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, this is this is going to get real interesting real it's, fast. It's about to get real <laughs> repulsive. I'm yeah. actually only here to talk about the shopping done by the different members of the team. And I will rate all of their outfits as well as Beautiful. updates on their women. I don't know if y'all saw that, but Larkin proposed to his girlfriend last night, and he's now engaged. Did he? Okay, so he yeah. signed one contract. That means we just <laughs> need the other one. Yeah, the big the big contract is still out. Is still up. Yes, I'm sure. Go. I'm sure he <laughs> yeah, used fuck that you, too. Fuck you, Dylan. I don't give a shit about your engagement. Cool, Dylan. You're engaged. Whatever. Let's let's engage the fans it's on the by ice. <laughs> signing an extension. It's all about on the ice. Well, I have some bad news about rating women. Uh, I'm dating a non-binary person, so I'm oh my god, kind of already out of luck there. Yeah, I know yeah. that they're not—they're not even on the LGBTQ. Like, where do you fit that? Are they under the Q because their name is Quinn? Probably. Oh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. LGBTQ. Quinn. <laughs> is Quinn going to make guest appearances? Yeah. Uh, Quinn is going to hopefully Please. make a guest appearance yeah. on opening night. Okay. Um, I've been say. trying to convince them to go to a Wings game for the past two years. Hopefully it happens this year um, so that they can beat all of you psychopaths in person and hopefully like not need years of therapy afterwards. Oh, it's going to be years of therapy. Because I, I mean, think... dating is already costly enough. Like, I've met yeah. Quinn now twice and I had that go. Like, are they all right? Well, do you know what uh, like cognitive behavioral therapy is? CBT, <laughs> cock and ball torture, like all those things. Cock and ball torture. <laughs> what the hell is going on over there in Pittsburgh? So hello, you guys are five minutes into the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't realized by now, that's what this is going to be. There's going to be wings talk. There's going to be tangents. There might be cock and ball torture. Given there how, will be cock and ball torture. Given how the current season's looking, I'm I'm suggesting or I'm, I'm surmising that there will be quite a bit of that. Let's hope not. <laughs> um, so Tom here is our ship cock and in ball the stormy expert. ocean. Yes, he's a known cock and baller. <laughs> um, when we get a little off track, he's going to be the one that keeps us on board. Maddie is like the opposite. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty much going to be, I feel like I'm going to be fighting Maddie this entire season, and it's going to be Maddie's the guy. to watch. Maddie's the guy in Titanic who, like, keeps trying to steal, like, the ocean pendant thing. I yeah. haven't seen the movie, so I don't know. 
<laughs> oh my god. I'm like Leonardo DiCaprio, and Tom is the old lady. <laughs> That's right. I That's am, all it is, right? I am the Titanic. I'm just a massive shipwreck. <laughs> Speaking of right. shipwrecks, let's talk about our experience at the draft party. <laughs> yeah, please tell me because I I did not have the pleasure of being there with you guys. It started with some laughs and some gaffes. Jake and I shared a beverage. And as soon as the pick started... Jake just started losing his fucking mind. And I could not... His laugh, if anyone has ever met Jake Rivard, you can hear his laugh. Like, there were thousands of people there. Oh. In there could have been, like, 300. But in my mind, there were thousands of people there. And you could still hear Jake's laugh over anyone else's. And as the picks progressed, without hearing Shane Wright's name, Jake got gradually more insane. So I was just, I was crying because Jake was screaming and it was so chaotic. Oh and it, it was beautiful. I, it was beautiful. You know? I saw the photos from Twitter and all I could do was just wish that I could be there. Because, you know, Jake's laugh is at, is unmistakable. Maybe you guys will hear it today. Maybe not. I what if that's pop. our intro? It's just your laugh on loop. It's just my laugh on loop. That, that's what a lot hey, of people everyone. hear, and they, like, descend into hell. It's just the Yeah, we, I, I think we'll lose a lot of listeners that way. <laughs> um, that way. I could play the Joker, I think. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't you're, have enough, like, you're basically Heath Ledger. I'm kind of there, yeah. Um, oh, okay, he, maybe He just like me part. for real. He just like me for real. <laughs> I can fix him. Um, I entered, right. So we entered the podcast, or we entered the draft party, excuse me. I expected Shane Wright to go first. He seemed like a no-brainer. He's been the guy for about three years now. And when he wasn't called, and Montreal chose Yuraj Slavkovsky, I lost my mind. I, I was like, beforehand, I was like, this would be Confirmed. the funniest thing ever if they just pick Slavkovsky and they just go totally off the board. And when it happened, I just, I couldn't help but laugh. I mean, the guy had like a Philip Zadina-esque quote where he was like, oh, I'm going to fill the, the nets of whoever uh, doesn't pick me first overall. <laughs> and hearing that and seeing his size and how similar he plays to Nail Yakupov, I was like, they have to do it. They have to pick him <laughs> first. <laughs> and it only got worse once New Jersey went Simon Nemich. <laughs> oh, my God. I know. Like, watching watching and listening to what was going on with the entire draft, I was stupefied by the fact that Wright was going to end dropping that far. By the time Montreal we... not picking Wright – to me, is a complete mistake. I like. I heard, hope Solskowski does well and well for his career and well in Montreal. But Wright, Wright has been the guy in this draft class since 2019 and well before that. But you know what? It was great to see him continue to fall and then see that death stare he gave Montreal, where he was just kind of looking him and he's laughing and he goes. Like he was such Bateman. a big baby about it. He was stu- <laughs> also. I don't know if you guys saw that, but afterwards he's like, "Yeah, this is that now I have a chip on my shoulder." Like, shut up! You just got drafted in the first round in the NHL, and uh, yeah. I think that's a, maybe another reason why some of those like the New Jersey pass on him. Maybe they had like interviews with him, and he was just a huge douche. And they're like, "We don't want this kind of guy on our team." But yeah, kiss excellence, you know. Yeah, uh, I got dollar signs for eyes. Right. Um, my last name is actually Goal. Patrick Kane was my favorite player. Like, yep. red flags all around. He's a big Danny Healy fan. I, <laughs> I love Danny I also love him. I don't agree with you guys at all. baby. I forget he killed a man, but yeah. He what? Wait. What? You didn't, didn't know that? Danny Healy killed a guy? Oh my this God. is how we're starting our first podcast. How the wow. fuck did you not know that? Yeah, he fucking killed a guy. Maybe no, he should just, well, <laughs> that. It's kind of like how people forget like the Japanese were terrible in World War II because now they're all cute. That's Danny Heatley. Brett, have you seen anime? Like, it's pretty good. And Danny Heatley scored 50 <laughs> in 2007. Like, have you seen got anime? A point. Maybe if got you scored 50 in 2007, you would understand. 50 in 07, fucking all-star Danny mm-hmm. Heatley. Everybody all-star knows Danny that. All-star Danny Heatley. Yep. So Danny after that, the, guy. the draft went kind of as planned, uh, except for a couple cool trades. The Wings got Ville Husso, which I thought was a banger. Ville Husso was requir- acquired from the St. Louis Blues for a third-round pick. Husso took over the starting role last season for a significant amount of time from Jordan Bennington, significantly less racist, a young, competent goalie, and 
signed to a three-year, four point five million a year, four point seven five million, sorry, a year contract. Um, I like what he's doing. I think with him and Nedeljkovic playing in tandem, they're going to be a great pairing, possibly one of the best in the East. And I'm curious what you guys think. I'd say so. Right now, it's it's nice to see that our goalie rooms like completely figured out. I appreciate the fact that you said significantly less racist and i'm a known grice hater so i'm really excited for this also i wonder wonder why why what i wonder why you would be a grice hater you know okay well you didn't know that danny (laughs) Heatley killed a guy so for everybody listening grice is not allowed to play for team germany he is german um because he's dipped his toes in nazi territory which is a big no-no and yeah, we just aren't talking about that. And he even had like the SS, like he, oh. there's a very, yeah, there's an SS symbol like from, yeah, obviously wow. in World War II. Just some, and just some light Nazism. It was a- <laughs> you know, sure, sure he was in Charlottesville, uh, you know, at the protest burning things with tiki torches, you know. Just casual racism. That's just that's just who Grice is. He's just that's just the kind of guy he is. He's just a man of the people, you know. Unless you're Jewish or not white. Okay. Did that one did that one kill? Oh, we killed Maddie. That's why. Did we? Okay. God. <laughs> I was like, oh no, I made her upset. Jake, how good would a goalie like? What save percentage would a goalie have to have for you to kind of let Nazi tendency slide? He was like Bezina worthy would you be cool with our goalie being a nazi i feel like grice needs to be better to be that controversial you know what i'm saying yeah he's not talented enough for me to like care <laughs> um but like to be honest try. i don't think there's anyone that talented <laughs> yeah I, I mean like i guess do you want my real answer or do you want my like uh my bit always the bit <laughs> always give me the bit. you give me you my you give me that elite nazi goaltender you throw in Slava Voinov, uh, who got, you know, deported <laughs> for beating his wife. Uh, you know, you get you get a couple of those other, like Patrick Kane, Evander Kane. You know, just give me the most toxic lineup you can give me. Yep. And I guarantee you, they will all be suspended two games into the season. Realistically, <laughs> absolutely no amount of save percentage or talent is enough to make me like a player if they are a giant piece of shit which is why I am anti-Evander Kane coming here, and I feel bad for Edmonton and Philly for having to get Tony D'Angelo. Tony D's nuts. I'm sorry, I mean, Tony, I'm not a racist, (laughs) D'Angelo. I feel like it's so fitting for Philly, though. Who who else should have that besides You put him there with torts? (laughs) Exactly. It's the perfect pair. Like, to me, I'm like, Tony D'Angelo having to say that he's not racist is possibly one of the funniest quotes of all time because as you know famous non-racists always have to constantly declare that they're not racist yeah i i honestly thought he was kind of racist and then he came out and said that i was like okay maybe i need to rethink things he's like i think he's super anti-semitic yeah yeah, sorry we're getting on tangent yeah yeah but to get back to the main (laughs) main (laughs) thing here that we were talking about guys (laughs) we traded for billy huso yeah, out of, out of St. Louis, St. Louis, played forty games. I had two point five six goals against average. You know, pretty good player. I yeah. love that our our currency or Iserman's currency for a decent large goalie is a third round pick, just like for Ned. Yes. Uh, that's, yeah. That's just how much it costs. That's the cost of doing business with us. Period. You don't have a third. It, it was you don't a have really a good pickup. Not getting our third rounder. <laughs> it was That's a great pickup I see. yeah and yeah and after after that or maybe before i don't know time is a flat circle they drafted marco casper with the eighth overall pick uh not yeah. much of a shock here that uh, eiserman decided to draft somebody out of the shl honestly before the announcement was made i was talking to izzy you know she's the artist fan cam creator dropped glove you know her you love her or she blocked you <laughs> um, um, she, had a, two. she wanted to do a video of my live reaction and I didn't know who the hell they were going to pick so I kept pointing at the camera and I kept going Matt Savoy, you are a Detroit Red Wing Brad Lambert, <laughs> you are a Detroit Red Wing and I named seven or eight guys 
but I didn't name Marco Casper. And the moment they announced him, I grabbed Izzy's camera and I went, Marco Casper, you are a Detroit Red Wing. I may have had I think a couple drinks in me. I think that's a great reaction to who Marco Casper was at that pick. I, I didn't see him on a whole lot of people's draft boards that in those numbers, but I had seen him up there before. I can't remember exactly who. But he was somewhere in, that was going to fall in that late 10 to mid-teens kind of area, I, I thought. Maddie, what are your vibes on him? Well, I love that we have even more German speakers on the team now. And I think immediately what I tweeted was there, he, they go, and Marco Casper from the SHL, and he's from Austria. And I was like, you know how many conversations I've had with Americans having to explain that Switzerland and Sweden are two different countries? And then I was just thinking, I'm going to have to have a conversation that this fucking guy's Austrian and played in Sweden, and it's just going to be very confusing. But aside from that, I was... I, I was not really going into the draft with, like, expectations, and I didn't want to, like, be that guy who was like, really on, I don't know, Savoy and, like, super confident. Oh, yeah, we're totally going to draft Savoy because you never know with Stevie Y, and I just trust whatever the fuck he's going to do. And, you know, somebody was like, oh, I wouldn't have picked him. Like, we could have picked fucking Grizzy the mascot, and I would have been like, Stevie knows what he's doing. So I'm just excited to see what, uh, yeah, what they saw in him so that, you know, when he comes to Detroit, we're all going to be stoked to watch him play and hopefully, he's, you know, going to do like what Cider did for us. And I love, I don't know if you guys saw that, the video that Cider did of him reading tweets from when he got drafted saying, oh, yeah, this guy's never going to do anything and blah, blah, blah. So maybe we'll get, I mean, it's not as critical this time around with Marco Casper, but. I think people are already saying, like, why didn't we get Savoy or why didn't we get this guy? So, has there been too many grades put out yet? Because I haven't yeah. looked to see. Okay. Um, a lot of a lot of places have been giving the wings a B or a B minus in the draft overall. Yeah, their main reasoning is like, I I'm not crazy about half of these picks, but woe be to the man that doubts Steve Eiserman. Because exactly. Because he's wrong so many times. Exactly. On the other hand, Scott Wheeler of the Athletic gave the day one of the draft uh, 16th out of 32, which, nice. you know, fair enough. There are a lot of people that got a lot of just major robberies. But on day two, he put them in 32nd out of 32 teams as the worst day two of the draft. After seeing Wheeler's take with Cider and with Edmondson, he was good about Raymond, but he's had, he's had a lot of takes, especially with the wings that have been pretty consistently wrong. I would have maybe, like, maybe not necessarily put them at 32nd, but if you are doubtful of the draft, you know, back it up with a little bit of evidence other than, like, these are players that I don't like. Like, oh, he didn't draft David Johnson, the five foot four forward from Thunder Bay, Ontario. Like, God forbid <laughs> that they go off of your uh, experience. Yeah, and that's, that <laughs> that's a terrible take by him. Steve, that 32 out of 32 on day two, really. I think we got some pretty good players. Yeah, which... on, like you watch any of the video from even the uh, round two guys, just those guys. It's clear that those are pretty good picks in those spots. And I'm really excited to talk about those other players, but for now, I think we should wrap up our analysis on Casper. The yeah. biggest benefits that he has is that he's played against grown men beginning uh, at age 17. He's got a good first step. A lot of prospect places, especially the Elite Prospects Draft Guide, have compared him to players like Zach Hyman and Brendan Gallagher. He's a huge pain in the ass to play again. He's going to be one of those guys who goes off in the playoffs. He's basically built for those kinds of deep runs. He's got a high floor, decent ceiling, projected at best as a second center. I don't think that's a very bad thing. I think he's going to be one of those clutch guys that shows up big in the playoffs. Everything that you just ran through, completely true. Um, the one couple of things I would mention, he is extremely gifted for high IQ. His coaches out in Rugal have praised him very, very much on his his ability, his hard work ethic, his determination, his ability to make changes when he needs to, to his style of play. And there's nothing but great praise that I've seen about Casper. I heard he's a friendly ghost, too. 
Yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for you to make that joke. Yeah, I'm I'm with you and again I'm just excited to see what he's gonna bring to us and I think it's so hard to say now and you know, I, it's now I'm watching more and more of like this his scouting videos and whatever Stevie Y sees in him, I'm just I'm running with it. Like you know those memes about how you shouldn't be a sheep in society? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm a sheep if Steve Eiserman's leading this pack because I don't care what he does. Also, I thought it was funny that, like, we now use Zach Hyman as a good player comparison or, like, a benchmark. Like, a few years ago, you would have never saw that, and then he just blew up this year in Edmonton. So if we get someone like Zach Hyman 2022, then I'm all on on board. And I also love the last point about Casper, but... Uh, when the reporter asked Eiserman what his best quality was, that he goes that he's a Detroit Red Wing. I was like, hell That's yeah. That's yeah, there's thing. nothing else you need to know. There's nothing else you need to know. Any of you guys that are big narrative fans are going to love this little piece too. The first point that he scored in the SHL was off of a cider goal. So oh, that's it's just good. One, one torch being passed to the other. That's lush. Okay, I like that. Now, if you guys like hard-hitting players that are going to go off in the playoffs, you are also going to love their second-round pick. At 40th overall, they selected Dylan James, a left wing from the Sioux City Musketeers of the USHL. He came up big for them in in the playoffs. They wound up winning. He won the SHL USHL Rookie of the Year. He's a commit to North Dakota, and he was ranked at 55th overall in the um, draft guide by Craig Button. So this one is a bit of a reach, according to him, but I'm curious to hear what you guys think. I think he's another one of those really good, intelligent, skilled, stick-handling forwards. Really, really quick player. Another great pick by Steve Eisenman in the second round. Nothing nothing too unexpected here, I think. I do have a quote from my USHL guy. His name's Gabe Foley. Shout out to Gabe yeah. if you're listening. Dylan James is sort of a shining star for the champion Sioux City Musketeers. James is a workhorse. He might not be a bubbling star, but he's going to work hard to develop right. Good pick for Detroit. He worked his ass off this season and adapted to every role he's put in. This kid has a powerful stride and hard-nosed attitude that he uses to get into opponents' faces and make things happen. He's a fast and strong. He's fast and strong, even in the smaller, even with his smaller stature. Their second line upside if things go well, but he could play anywhere in the lineup. I don't mind that at all. While you do that, we're going to go to our next guy, Dmitry Buchelnikov from the MHL, or as I like to call it, the National Hockey League. <laughs> yeah, um, probably going to be a while until we see him. <laughs> Given the uh, current state of, well, well, actually, you know what? Why? Why, why Tom? Why, why is that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Putin's waging a massive war in Ukraine for no, uh, no reason other than he wants land <laughs> and wants wants to have portions of Ukraine and the oil and all the wonderful economy that goes with it. <laughs> And you know who can blame him? You ever meet a landlord before? You know landlords. Landlords need need things too. Landlords Jake, the most do not group. Jake do not try to defend Putin right now. Landlords are the most do oppressed not in, no shut the, the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> shut the fuck up. Did you guys know Putin plays hockey? Like he's a he fucking all star. Like, it, it's so crazy. Watching yeah, an all star according to him in the Kremlin. That's Literally, all like that killed him. The goalies will let him score like nine goals yep. a game. And yeah, because like, yeah, if they he don't, they disappear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, speaking Next disappear. thing you know, they're in Siberia. <laughs> speaking of which, has anybody checked in on Kirill Kaprizov? Oh my god, that's not even funny, dude. That's, that's like scary. That is scary. And honestly, I was thinking about Kaprizov when you were talking. I was like, oh shit, we drafted a Russian. Like, uh, we got to yeah. that over here. Not only did we draft a Russian, but we drafted a very skilled Russian. Dmitry Bichelnikov is. A basically a human highlight reel. He's got great stick handling. He's very oh, creative. Absolutely. He's a really good goal scorer, and he is a late round Russian pick or mid round Russian pick. And you know who else Steve Eisman chose with a mid round Russian pick when he was at Tampa? Nikita nope. Kucherov. Ooh, Ooh, I like that. So this could be our coochie. Yes, I did. This is the pod's coochie. This is Detroit <laughs> coochie. The de coochie. The de coochie. Okay, I'm down. Okay. Well, we can see the third round because we already talked about our currency for that. Imagine yeah. my shock when Steve Eiserman drafted a giant defenseman from the SHL. 
Anton Johansson, six foot four, 179 pounds. Yeah, he real big surprise there. <laughs> he's a big guy. He shoots right. He is going to score. He's going to do his thing. That was really playing, all I got to say about him. That was yeah, really- he's played in a good program in Lexans, but I mean, let's just hope that he does well. It's a mid, mid-round pick. Maddie, what do you think of his face? Well, he's a child. Honestly, I started doing this and I was looking at them. I'm like, this is fucking weird. These kids are like 17 and 18. I'm an adult woman. Babies. I, I cannot be like roasting them. Like, yeah, look at this fucking guy. Like, I'm gonna, I gotta be a bigger person here. But what I will say is. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> I, I, I was fine. I was like holding my breath and it felt like something familiar just to have a last name that ends in S O N and the Swedish vibes back. So I'm, I'm happy. Like you said, another SHL pick. So uh, imagine that's it. how he must've felt when Anton and Janssen from Fjallersborg <laughs> was available. Eiserman's running to the podium, slamming that button as fast as he can. <laughs> <laughs> Massive Swedish defense. Speaking yeah. of which, Maximilian Kilpinen? Kilpinen. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Jake, I think you skipped one guy here. Did I? Yeah. Um, um, it was um, how much day is? I skip him? How could you skip this name? Oh, Amadeus Lombardi? That is the most elite name I think I've heard this entire draft. I know Cutter, uh, Gauthier, and Rutger McGrody are great names, but like, how do you ever top Amadeus Lombardi of the Flint so Firebirds? Good. Yeah, so w- kind of a Another local st- pick. Flint's, Flint's got a good program. I I did uh, a little bit of work with them back in 2019 before the pandemic and saw Shane Ray play as well as saw some of the some of their other guys like Delandria and Hoffman. Lombardi came in after I was gone, but he looks like a really good pick coming out of the Flint Firebirds, and they're going to have a great program coming out next year and going forward. Do you remember like a few years ago when Flint fired the Flint Firebirds had that like nepotism baby problem? Where yes. like Yeah, it was like super controversial. Yeah. Like the owner refused to ice the good players because they wanted his son to like get ice time. <laughs> yeah. <No? laughs> yeah, that's a problem in the uh in the minor league hockey world. But Zach Hyman, speaking of him again, that's a whole that's a whole podcast episode that we could talk about. He had this Whoa. his yeah, I'm not going to – I know Tom's going to get mad if I go off on a tangent, but <laughs> Google it. Zach Hyman's dad, ha- he was pulling some strings, oh, but God. it worked out. It worked out. It worked out. I'm excited to read about that now. Let's get back to our man, Amadeus. So Tom gave us a little bit of a rundown on his time in Flint, how he's going to develop. I personally really hope that if he does make it to the NHL, that his goal song is Rock Me, Amadeus. I think that would be quite the banger. I yeah, think that's for anyone, but especially for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, if you guys were to go in and have like a goal song or like a walk up to the play song baseball, what would you do? Jake has asked me this question like five times, and I actually tweeted today because mine changed. You know, London Bridge from Fergie came on when I was working out, and that song goes fucking hard. That's a banger. That would be my. It's a banger, man. I think that's mine would mine. be um, Hollaback Girl. I think that, like, that yeah. opening, like, the, uh-huh, that's a shit, that'd be me. That's, yep. I walk up to that. <laughs> that's good. That's a good thing. I was going to say, uh, do dope fuck hoes by Run the Jewels, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's a banger, too. <laughs> that's so just good. my pick. <laughs> I'd be very curious to hear what all of you guys think, too. If you are following us on Twitter at, at 313Hockey, be sure to reply with your walk up to the plate song. Let us know what you think. And be sure to subscribe to us on the podcast following of your choice. Mad Max. Let's talk a little bit about this little psychopath. (laughs) In 27 games in the junior SHL, he scored 25 points. He came in big in the playoffs, scoring nine points in six games. And he is your prototypical Swedish center. He could be good. He could be a depth guy. Who knows? Yeah, I... I think our kind of hope is right now what Jonathan Bergeron's been able to do his first first few years after getting drafted. We'll see. It's uh, another late round center SHL pick. Hopefully but he I does do like, well. But 
what I do like about these late picks is that Eiserman is just swinging for the fences. He is looking that's at potential. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the big thing is all these guys have pretty pretty high ceilings for yeah. what they were in, in those late picks. And, and I mean, their floors... And their floors are probably don't even make the NHL, yeah. half of these guys. But I think the, the best thing about them is when you get to this round of the draft, you've got to start betting on potential over what they currently are. Very few late-round picks turn into bona fide NHL players. And even if these guys turn into, like, bottom-pairing defensemen, you know, fourth-liners, like, that's still a hit. Jonathan Erickson was the last pick in his draft, and he turned out yeah. to be possibly the last, the bat, the best last pick of all time. So, I mean, it's really just going to come down to the development of these guys, how they do over the next couple of seasons. But, yeah, late-round picks. We'll see. I was just going to say, talking about late-round picks, like, we have to mention Datsu. You can't talk about late-round picks. Yes. Oh, about yeah. Datsu, Zetterberg. I think Holmstrom was a late-round, right? I believe so. Like, all those guys are just – that's pure highway robbery. Exactly. That's what I'm hoping we're building right now. Me too. Yeah. Grab one of those guys. And one of those guys that I hope pans out is Tanias Mathurin. I believe it's pronounced Tanias. Sorry if I got it wrong. Tanias. Yeah. Whatever your correct pronunciation is. Yeah, um, the OHL in North Bay. Corey yeah. Frommen says, Mathurin is a big defenseman who skates well and can defend effectively. He shows flashes of skill, but his game mostly lacks offensive puck-moving instincts. What it doesn't lack, however, is a good, good amount of self-awareness. On his Twitter bio, he has Black Lives Matter right off the bat. So easy banger right there. Ace. I like him. Yep, beast ahead of his time. Hope he pans out. I said yeah. based, also based. Oh, based. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he put up 15 points in 44 games, so those are pretty decent numbers in the LHL. We'll see how he does. Owen Mellenbacher. Wow, is that a German last name? Maddie, as our German speaker, is that German? Um, actually, it's pronounced Mellenbacher. Yeah, that's more like it. <laughs> you sound like you ever watch like Scrubs. Yeah. Do you do you sound like Elliot from Scrubs when she speaks German? Oh like, no. Oh god, that, <laughs> that's the. <laughs> I love that show. Great show. No, I was going to say that they're they're a Red Wings fan on the show. I forgot which character. The one doctor. Oh my god, Doctor Cox. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Doctor Cox. Common W. Honestly, yep. any fictional character, including Tupac. That's a Red yeah. Wings fan is automatic. Okay. Including Tupac. Tupac, Tupac was Tupac's still name. alive, dude. <laughs> Tupac's Tupac my Cuba. favorite anime character. <laughs> Tupac, the most famous fictional character. Actually, have either of you ever met Tupac? I don't know. No. Well. No. See, there, there's proof right there. Three out of three people on this podcast have never met Tupac. Therefore, he isn't real. He's a fictional character. All right, let's talk about Brennan. Brennan Ali. Prince Ali Our also pick. played That's on not Lincoln it. Stars in the USHL with Dylan James. He was one of the top oh. prospects in prep hockey this season. He represented US, Team USA at the Holinka Gretzky Cup. He scored three points in four games. He's a smart guy, and he's one of probably one of the highest potential guys in the bottom half of the draft. I'm probably going to go back to the USHL again. I imagine he's going to... Hopefully, I, I don't know how he's going to pan out. He could become the Elmer Shoulderblum of this draft, or he could just be another late round what if. I think that's a common theme with all these picks that we've had since really the second round. Is they're all they all have high hockey IQ, so we'll see where they all end up going. I'd like all of them to be someone that at least plays in the AHL, and we see how they do from there. I don't know. I like Ali. Wait, last kind of pick, 212, who knows? And I believe that is all of our draft class. So overall, we've got, was it, nine guys? Um, what do you guys grade in terms of what you think of it right now and how you think it's going to pan out? I'll just maintain my position of an Iserman we trust. But from my knowledge as a plebe who reads Twitter and listens just to other dudes talk about po hockey i would say probably a b yeah b seems pretty respectable i'm I'm close to a b minus c plus i know prashant got like pilloried on twitter for it sorry prashant that that happened to you there are a lot of people that spend like 18 hours online a day and they got really upset as for me who spends 20 hours a day online i was pretty thrilled <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, honestly, I like I like it at a B minus B kind of rating. It's nothing to write home about as far as the draft class, but it's nothing that you're coming away with saying these guys were the absolute draft losers of this year. So Chicago. Yeah, we're not we're not Chicago. I would I would throw Montreal into that into there, but that's more on a personal basis with them <laughs> not picking right. Tom's Tom is team right. He is a he's a I like him. I saw him play in play against Flint and he pulled out some crazy moves I've never seen done on the ice. If Tom is team right, I'm team wrong because fuck that guy. That's right. <laughs> I'm team. Uh, I like the drama, and I want to see Shane Wright. <laughs> yeah, the... Oh yeah, no, like don't get me wrong. I'm here for the drama. It's going to be interesting to see him play in the NHL. I love that he got picked up by Seattle, and I think that Seattle's going to do pretty well with him and Bernier's. He had that same look that the kid in The Incredibles has when he's like staring at the Mister Incredible poster, and his <laughs> eyes are like almost rolled in the back of his head. Yeah, <laughs> like we just witnessed a villain origin story. Oh, maybe. Jake, what do you think McKinnon's or- origin story is? Like, why why is McKinnon the way he is? That's a really good question. Um, I think that as a kid, he, like, worshipped the <laughs> ground Sidney Crosby walked on. You know, you, you can't watch a Nathan McKinnon interview without him mentioning Sidney Crosby. Like, he will not shut up about him. After having launched the 2008 and 2009 him. Stanley Cup Finals, I think he watched those and he went, wow, he just like me for real. And when he couldn't hit that ceiling, he started to go a little crazy. And he started to really just get good looks at Crosby's figure. And he kept thinking, how can I make my body look like that? He started getting into extreme dieting. Then he started getting into bullying other people. And then on the most recent interview, this is when I knew he was truly a psychopath. It was when one of his teammates in the locker room was talking about how good he is at motivating, how he's, he's such, a, such a great motivator. You know, He really keeps people in check. And in the background, he's McKinnon is ripping the head off of a rookie's shoulders and drinking the blood from his neck. And is screeching. that where that text earlier came from? Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's making just yeah. this ethereal screech, roaring, throwing his head around. And the player sitting in front of the mic is going, yeah, he's just like really good at you know holding us accountable. He's, he's really good at keeping people in check. Yeah, I think that guy's a psychopath. <laughs> Moving on to the free agent. Yes. Uh, but before that, I would like to make a little bit of an announcement. Yeah. Oh, shit. For all of those listening in at 313 Hockey, we have a little bit of a giveaway on our first episode. Today, we will be giving away an Andreas Anthonisiu autographed puck. In order to become eligible to win this puck, follow at 313 Hockey on Twitter and retweet our pinned tweet at the end of our episode for a chance to win. If you don't have a Twitter and you still want to participate, Email 313hockeypod at gmail.com and subscribe to the podcast on your platform of choice, and we'll add you to the list. On to free agency, what do you think of this class? Because I was looking over it earlier today. It's very shallow. This class kind of sucks. To say the <laughs> least. <laughs> yeah. Do I want 72-year-old P.K. Subban on, like, an $8 million deal? Do I want Victor Rask, who skate slower than my grandma walks i don't know what do you guys want i want hot dog boy yeah hot dog you boy. want to feel the thrill <laughs> yeah feel the thrill i want phil kessel uh, like honestly that's what this free agency class is at these are the kind of players that you're thinking about are like in our show notes we have malkin written down oh, i'm yeah. not sure if malkin comes comes back phil phil the thrill kessel I would love to just see him play in a Detroit Red Wings jersey, and I think we would make our money back on hot dog sales. So, I got somebody to... <laughs> taking the hot day at Coney Island. Just watch his mind just blow. Yeah. Other than that, like, there's not really much in the free agent class that um that makes me really excited to go out and sign anyone. In 82 games this year, Phil Kessel managed 52 points on the Arizona Coyotes, which were among yeah. one of the worst offensive teams in the league. Yeah. So I mean, he's still got some gas in the tank. He is a he. He survived the Toronto Maple Leafs, which is I mean that that should earn him a Medal of Honor in and of itself. It, it really should. Survived the Coyotes, which again another Medal of Honor right there. And he played for the Penguins. The, just just let this man retire in peace. And if he doesn't want to retire, give him a real mega dynasty like Detroit. 
couple year deal, nothing too crazy. You know, even if you want to overpay him, just get him there for two, three years. Let him be a mentor for your wingers. Put him I don't know. If he, with <laughs> I don't know if he's uh, one of those mentor kind of players, <laughs> but you'll at least make your money back. And yeah, I, I think he'd just be fun. Be so good. Yeah. yeah, the content that would come out of having Phil Kessel on our team would be so rich. Yeah. He's an American hero. American he really is. Hero. The world's sexiest man. 2017. No. Too, far. Too far. People Magazine cover. You'll have to look it up. Too Should far. we do a uh, giveaway with my nasty ass? Absolutely yeah. not. Yep. Whatever you want to say, let's do it. Beer covered cigarette mark. Yep. Thomas USA, a recovering Bill Kessel jersey. Yes. Thomas a recovering frat boy. And his weapon of choice at some of the biggest parties Dude, was. Eight. A Team USA Phil Kessel jersey. Yes, and all the beer stains. That, <laughs> that thing has seen market. Some <laughs> yes, it has. That thing is eligible for psychedelic mushroom treatments for PTSD based on the amount of shit that it's been through. Probably. Given the fact that uh, in an interview that I believe George Malik posted, shout out George Malik, Marco Casper will be heading back to the SHL. So even if he did make the team or even if he was able to I don't know if he'd be able to slot in at 2C right away, but we will need a second-line center, as Pia Suter, I don't think, is the answer. Yeah. And you're not going to get a quality second-line center without a little bit of term. So those big dogs like Vincent Trochik, Nazem Kadri, Andrew Kopp are going to look for a little longer term and a little higher pay. If you're willing to stomach that, I say go for it. But given the fact that Kadri is going to be on the wrong side of 30 when, this deals, when his deal's up, and Trochik and Kopp haven't really shown exceptional ability to warrant like their high pay i'm not too crazy about it yeah i'm not too crazy about any of those those guys either at those price price ranges now evgeny malkin that is another story i don't think i saw the instagram post that he made yes. he that, had a rough, that was the only yeah. thing that made me excited out of all of this is malkin talking about how he, when he was a kid he would cheer for the wings and just look up to like his russian or soviet heroes on the wing so i would think he would make his dreams come true and he'd get malkin's just a great player so i'd be super stoked to see him play over here but besides malkin no one else like tom said no one else was really making me excited yeah on the letter he said like one day he dreams of playing for the red wings and i'm like bro come in 41 yep. games this season he scored 42 points at 35 years of age he still has what it takes to score at a point per game or higher you would be stupid to not try to go for a guy like Malkin, regardless yeah. of where you're at in your rebuild. I was going to just ask, because Jake, you're out in Pittsburgh. What have you kind of heard about uh, what's going on there? Because that's the only thing is like, I don't know if Malkin necessarily wants to leave Pittsburgh. He's played there his entire career. See, and that's where things are getting interesting. He actually recently, it's, it was really sad. There was a piece from The Athletic where he was, he was kind of moping about like how – the Pens tried to, he offered an idea of signing a four-year, six million a year contract with the Pens, and they declined it. That's six million dollars for a player that's scoring really? per game. They're worried about term. And given the fact that they just signed Latang for, I believe, a five-year deal, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't understand why they wouldn't do it. Even if the team is going to just tank in a hilarious way at the end of Crosby, Malkin, and Latang's careers. Like, why would you not want to keep that core together? They might, they still have a little bit of gas in their tank. I mean, they made it to the second round of the playoffs this year. Yeah, I mean, with those three players, do you think that they could retool pretty quickly and at least kind of make a push? I think they could try. I think this is going to be their, like, last dance if they do it. Yeah. Like, it's, it's all or nothing this year, and I don't think they've got it, but I think it'd be cool to see them try, and it'd be great to see them send a, you know, a couple high picks for the wings if they want somebody... Yeah, I mean, I would not be opposed to that either. Like, I I do not. I like Malkin. To happen to the pink. Oh, go ahead, Maddie. I couldn't hear you. I just said on um, the tail end of that, I just don't want anything good to happen to the Penguins. If anybody's a little bit leery about having Malkin, what I think you guys need to understand is that at this point in the rebuild, and given the Villa Huso trade, they're not going to be tanking again next season. Like, they're no. physically, the roster is too talented to tank. They are in a mire of right. mediocrity. Too good to be bad, too bad to be good. And if you yep. want to continue to see Larkin waste his prime, you're going to be pretty bummed out. That's a good um, Yeah, that's a good point. That That is a really good point, though, Jake, that 
if you're going to really look at making a push and, instead of being in this place of mediocrity, you have to go out and make a splash and take a swing at one of those big names. Malkin is one of those big names. He still has that gas in the tank. I like him as a player. I, If he came here, I would be very happy to see it happen. What about your boy Giroux? I'm just thinking oh. about that article you wrote a few weeks ago. I am also a big fan. If you haven't noticed that the trend of guys who were stars for a long time in the early to mid 2000s and how they're like old farts now, like, you know, PK Subban and Malkin yep. and all these guys, that's what you get in this draft, in this free agency class. And Claude Giroux is one of the biggest names there. I personally think Giroux would be a great fit. I don't think ultimately, he would come here. Ultimately, it would come down. He to wouldn't. Him. He wants a cup. He wants yeah. a cup. Then why is he looking at I hope Ottawa? He's- like, that's, <laughs> well, that's, that's uh, we, a little confusing to me. Okay. Ottawa is kind of on the up and up, though. You have to give them that. Giroud, well, we're on the up and up. Yeah. Sure, Giroud has been linked to Edmonton, Florida again, and now Ottawa. I think the Ottawa stuff might just be smoke, just given that yeah. uh, his hometown is in Ottawa. But Yeah, I, that makes sense. Yeah, if he's looking for a cup, he's not going to get one here in the next three years. And if he is, yeah. he, it would be in a depth role at best. Right. And he wants to go someplace where he can contribute to that cup. He's still in that prime prime kind of age where he wants to be a contributing prime force. 35. <laughs> well, you you know what I mean. Like, I prime know. of, like, being a solid contributor to that team. So, I mean, center depth, not ideal. I'm sure they're going to sign, like, a stopgap or somebody who can fill the void, or they'll make a trade for somebody good. Speaking of stopgap, I... Don't hate the idea of a guy named Colin White. He was Ooh. released by Ottawa on a prove it deal kind of thing, just to see what happens. Yeah. Just to fill in those kind of, that center depth role. It's a one year deal, two years max. You see I, and, what kind of happens. And on one hand, I'm with you, but on the other hand, I'm like, they've already got like depth guys. You know, we've got our Rasmussen, we have our Mitchell Stevens, we've got um, that's fair. Maybe even Sam Gagne, like. What I, I don't see him tapping in as a, like a second line center. In terms of re-signing guys, are there anybody? Is there anybody in particular that is on an, either of your radars? Gagne. Yeah, that's really about it. Yeah, I don't mind him. Good fourth line center. Good two way yeah, instinct. Strong, great yeah. penalty killer. Okay. He is definitely one of the players of all time. Jake said, and also we have such a young team, and he's a bit older, so I think. His experience and for the young guys, I think being like a mentor for some of the other guys in the locker room has been good. But besides that, I don't really feel strongly about us resigning him if we speak. Hogan. Yeah, if we were to just kind of let him walk in free agency, I wouldn't be upset. But you kind of just sign him as a stopgap. He's boneless for another player. year. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say, like, I think that's kind of the unfortunate part with this offseason. I don't think it's going to be all that exciting for the Red Wings. It's it's going to be boring. It's going to be very boring. I don't think you see Steve make that many moves, if too many at all. Just totally just gets Austin Matthews for nothing. Like, how oh, crazy I would mean, that be? Would you oh cheer for the God. bald boy, balding boy, or Jack Nicholson? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I guess. I would. He'd flash Do his I own have pants to? at you. <laughs> Do I have to? <laughs> I'd call him Captain Underpants. I just want to at that point. If he's back you're, after you're right. Like I, I would be, I would be ecstatic to have Austin Matthews on the team, but I, I don't know. If I would want that. <laughs> get Leon Leon Dreisaitl. I think that yeah. would be cool. Like just simply get him. What's that? What's the guy? Yes. Um, the octopus thrower, <laughs> where they were like, yeah, a first round pick. Philip Zadina, Joe Valeno, and Jacob Verana will get you Leon Dreisaitl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like hell it will. I want Mark Stahl back. I think he's cool. I like his energy. He is either the best player on the ice or just the worst defense defenseman you've ever seen in your life. Yeah. And I just I think he's got good chaotic energy, and I'm all about that. Because <laughs> there's going to be some games where they're going to be down do like that four nothing. Getting. There's There's just going to be like just nothing going on. You're going to be bored. You're going to be tired. And you're going to be like, I need some excitement. And then you're just going to see Mark Stahl just break through the offensive zone, get a breakaway, do a crazy dangle, and totally miss the net. And you're going to be sad about it. But for those couple seconds, those brief 
few fleeting moments where you're watching him break away and you're thinking, my God, is he going to do it? You're alive again. <laughs> and that, my friends, is why we need Mark Stahl. And yeah. he blows it. And this is why Jake is always for the chaotic good. <laughs> Speaking of the chaotic good, RFAs, I'm thinking guys like Zadina and Stevens are going to get qualified. Like, that's yep. kind of a no-brainer. I don't think you're going to see Ali Juolabi again. As far as free agency goes with the defense, the defense is also not very great. It is very rough on both I, ends of the ice. <laughs> I think a guy like Nikita Zadorov would be really cool. He's big and he hits yeah. hard, but I don't think he's going to be leaving Calgary. He's got a really good situation there. And why would you leave a loaded roster like that for a shallow roster like this? Yeah. Uh, Jan Ruda from Tampa Bay, similar kind of situation. I don't think he would leave if Tampa can figure out their cap space issues. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, so. they, they traded McDonough, so they have a little bit more cap room. I don't know how much I'd have to double check, but. Yeah, I was looking at it earlier, but I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. But I like, they, sh- they should have plenty of room to be able to figure out signing. I think it's maybe four or five guys. The biggest, the hottest, spiciest move that I think they should do, and I think would cause a complete microcosm meltdown of epic proportions in the province of Ontario would be to offer sheet Rasmus Sandin. I want to say 4.2 million a year. You can get him, steal him from the Leafs in exchange for a second round pick. I think that's a pretty good move. If you're going to send an offer sheet on a player, why not just send one to New York with Noah Dobson? What's the deal with uh, Dobson? I haven't done any research on him. He's got like 50 some points. <laughs> okay. Do they have yeah. now? Do, do the Islanders have awesome. the cap to match it? They should be able to have the cap to match him, but you send him such an outrageous cap hit. That's my point with saying that why not send one to New York? Offer sheets screw over your cap space. Well, me and you have already me and you have already talked about this, and I'm not a fan of sending an offer sheet. So my the method behind my madness is that Detroit is currently about $10 million under the cap. They need to spend in order to even reach the minimum. Toronto has about $10 million yeah. left over in cap. They've got to sign a goaltender. They've got to sign a couple key UFAs, including if they keep Ilya Mikhaev, they'll need to do that. They need free agents. And I don't see Sandin making a push to get on this roster, given how locked up the rest of their core is. <laughs> you know who would be a very interesting player? Who? Dominic Kubelik. He is not going to be qualified by the Chicago Blackhawks. What what made you say that? He throws a lot of hits. He's 26 years old, and he has 33 points on the season. Probably your depth winger. Might not be worth the pick. Might have a better hope somewhere else. I don't know. What do you guys think? (laughs) It hurt the Blackhawks, and if we can take away one of their players and fleece them, great. Also, I think he'd be a good fit here in Detroit if we were to take him. I think any player, yeah, like you said, anything off of the Blackhawks is good for everybody else. When the Blackhawks lose, the rest of the league wins. Ain't that the truth. Period. I, I'm cool with picking them up however way, however way that happens. Per, point production is pretty good, so kind of fits that mold of what we need with some grit. So he's going to be a UFA that they might look at, might not. He'd be good because he's played with Pia Suter before, I think. That could be a maybe. Another name I have an eye on is Nick Haig. So if you aren't familiar, the Vegas Golden Knights are in a little bit of a cap crunch, as they have been for their entirety. They are $2,657,143 over the cap, according to Cap Friendly. Nick Haig is an upcoming RFA, which means he's going to need to be extended or qualified to some degree. And I think with just the right amount of help, the Wings could easily poach him off of their roster. Haig is young, he's tall, and he's a great defenseman. He's played up and down their lineup. He filled in for Alec Martinez. He's filled in anywhere they need on the lineup. So I think he'd be decent. He fits that mold that Eisman looks for. Another big defenseman? Sign me up. Yeah. <laughs> Shoring up that de- that defensive core is what I've been preaching this entire this entire summer when we've been planning all this out. Defense is what we need. <laughs> We're going to have large lads. It's going to be like Attack on Titan with the rumbling. That's going to be our lineup. <laughs> yep. Yes. Well, that's all we have for today. Like I said earlier, 
follow 313 Hockey on Twitter whenever you get the chance. If you retweet our tweet or send us an email at 313hockeypod at gmail.com, you can be entered to win an Andreas Anthonisiu autographed puck. Stay tuned throughout the season as we're going to be having other giveaways and guest appearances. Our next guest should be the Unsung Octopi podcast. They are Red Wings historians, uh, Adriana Sinistage and Sean Day. These guys are very well versed on the history of the Wings. They're going to give us some previews on what they think the offseason is going to be like. I'm really excited to have them on. I know these guys love them. And we're really looking forward to just getting this thing going. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to us. If you like what you heard, give us some subscriptions on your podcast platform of choice. Give us some good ratings and send some good vibes. Um, do you guys have anything else you'd like to add? No, yeah, what Jake said. <laughs> what Jake said, Thanks. smash that motherfucking like and subscribe button. Smash that like button. Give us your clout. We have a tip option in our Twitter page. We have to use that to pay for Maddie's uh, strength and conditioning training since she is eligible for the next draft. we got to make yep. sure that she's on her best <laughs> because the Arizona Coyotes are going to need her. What are you talking about? She's getting drafted to Detroit. <laughs> right, yeah. She's going to be the next. We're going to retire. What was your number in uh, in high school, Maddie? 30. When you played goalie. We're going to retire number 30 at the LCA. Calling it now. Yep. From our side of the ring to yours, thank you for tuning in, and we're looking forward to hearing you next week.